Marvel did not have a Hall of Fame year in 2022. There were some great parts that made us remember why we like these crazy superhero stories so much. There were also a few times when we wondered if the comic book industry had gotten a little too big and complicated. Here are Marvel's 10 most upsetting and annoying moments from 2022, ranked from least upsetting to most upsetting. First, the story screeches to a halt on Ms. Marvel and the hasty introduction of Scarlet Scarab in Moon Knight. So far, many of Marvel's TV shows have had the same problem. Problem. They try to fit ideas that would take about 12 hours into 6 or 8 episodes. Ms. Marvel gave its main character a lot of interesting things to deal with, like problems with her mother, the fact that she was destined to be a superhero, her friendships with Bruno and Cameron, the status of the clandestines, and the fact that she chose to call herself Ms. Marvel. But it had barely talked about any of that when the whole show stopped to send Kamala Khan back in time to find out more about how she got her superpowers. These scenes were also important, but by the time Ms. Marvel came back to the present, there was only one episode left to finish the story, and there was almost no time for all those side stories, which were only resolved in short bits of dialogue, if at all. These problems with the pace keep coming up in these Marvel Disney Plus shows. When it comes to stories that didn't get nearly enough time, Moon Knight's last episode added the Scarlet Scarab to its cast of costume heroes. The show explained why Layla, who was in a relationship with Mark Spector, might temporarily get superpowers, but it mostly felt like an excuse to spice up a TV season that wasn't very exciting or full of big events. If Scarlet Scarab was so important to the Moon Knight mythos as a whole, she probably should have been saved for the second season, where she could have gotten the storyline and screen time she needed to be a good addition to the cast. Next, Bruce disappears from She-Hulk Attorney at Law, and Shuri goes bad for reasons in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. The best thing about Marvel is that any character could show up at any time or place. Mark Ruffalo's role in She-Hulk was was great because it showed how the main character got to be who she is. But then, Bruce does a poochie and basically disappears from the rest of the series. He doesn't exactly say, I have to go now, my planet needs me, but he comes pretty close. That's the bad thing about Marvel. They can usually get people to show up for cameos, but getting them to show up often is much harder and happens less often. The beginning of Wakanda Forever was very moving, but the final battle was just as cold and disappointing. One big problem is that the movie's plot requires the new Black Panther, Shuri, to be angry and violent, which doesn't fit her character's arc. And people say that she is so angry that she wants to turn the whole world into ash. And yes, Namor and Tolokan have killed her mother, but the world, or Namor, didn't kill her brother T'Challa. He died of a disease that no one knows the name of. That's not the fault of the world. Shuri's sudden embrace of darkness and vengeance felt like a big change in her character that neither the script nor Letitia Wright could explain or explain away. Moving on, the big twist on Moon Knight and Vision never shows up in Multiverse of Madness. Like Ms. Marvel, Moon Knight had its own bottle episode that was set apart from most of the rest of the show. In it, Oscar Isaac's character, Mark Spector, is locked in a mental hospital where Ethan Hawke's character, Arthur Harrow, tries to convince him that he is not a superhero, but a disturbed person. We know Spectre isn't crazy though. Even when the show makes it seem like he's dead, and the hospital is the afterlife, we know he's not dead, or won't be for long. The name of the show is Moon Knight, and there wouldn't be much reason to keep it going if he was. Moon Knight could have gone into so many interesting ideas, especially about the relationship between Mark Spectre and his alter, Stephen Grant. And yet, a lot of it was just dull turns and chases. It was a waste of a really good idea. Doctor Strange, and the Multiverse of Madness is the best movie or TV show from Phase 4 of the MCU in my opinion. But an important plot flaw keeps it from being one of Marvel's best movies ever. In the movie, we see and hear about a few different versions of Wanda Maximoff, but we never see Vision in any of the worlds we visit, even though his death is what drives her crazy and makes her try to steal America Chavez's powers. Even though there is still a Vision in the main MCU who could have helped at some point, he is not here. Paul Bettany wasn't hired to be in this Doctor Strange movie, so it makes sense that we never see him. But the story in Multiverse of Madness about Wanda being sad about her dead family would have been a lot more moving if Vision had been a part of it in some way. Next up, Gore's dumb wish in Thor Love and Thunder and the Veil of Noor on Ms. Marvel. The song Love and Thunder's Gore the God Killer, played by Christian Bale, is trying to find the cosmic being Eternity, who is said to be able to grant him any wish. Even though Thor and Jane Foster try their best, Gore makes it to Eternity. He gets what he wants, but at the last minute, Thor talks Gore out of it. He doesn't want all gods to die. Instead, he wants his dead daughter to come back to life. But then Gore says he is dying, 
so he asks Thor to watch over his daughter, and Thor agrees. The idea of Thor being forced to act as a surrogate father is interesting. Was this the best way to get there, though? Gore could have had anything he wanted. Why didn't he want to spend the rest of his life with his daughter? Why didn't Gore want his whole race to start over again? Why didn't he wish that everything that led to the destruction of his planet had never happened? He should have asked for more wishes. In recent years, Marvel's critics have talked a lot about the visual effects, and there have been a few articles about how the company is said to overwork its VFX artists. I can't confirm any of that, but as a viewer, I haven't noticed a big drop in the quality of Marvel's CG images, with the notable exception of the scene in Miss Marvel where the clandestines open the veil of Nor that separates our world from theirs. When the clandestines touch this veil, they change into, well, the results are so bad that it's hard to explain. They became a bunch of purple rocks, then the purple rock falls apart, leaving only their bones. Also, when Najma, the leader of the clandestine group, goes to touch the veil, she sees one of her friends get purpled to death by it. So what does she decide to do? Touch it as well. This wasn't exactly a great ending to a story. Finally, everything involving Val and Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Wong can't stop breaking abomination out of jail in She-Hulk Attorney at Law. I've liked Julia Louis-Dreyfus ever since she was on Seinfeld, but I don't know what she or Marvel were going for with her appearance in Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. She didn't play CIA director Valentina Allegra de Fontaine as a smart or capable government worker. Instead, she played her like Elaine Benes. Some of her one-liners and the whole subplot about her divorce from Agent Everett Ross could have come straight out of Seinfeld. Maybe a later Marvel movie will explain why this top US spy always acts like he doesn't know anything. In this sad movie about loss and grief, her jokes stood out like a sore thumb. Wong's appearances in She-Hulk Attorney at Law seemed like a retcon to explain why he was recently seen in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings fighting the Abomination in an underground superhero fight club. On She-Hulk, he shows up as a witness at Abomination's parole hearing. There, he says that he broke Abomination out of jail so that he could train with him as Sorcerer Supreme. But why would the Sorcerer Supreme break out a supervillain with a lot of power just to practice fighting? Why not fight someone like the Hulk? And why not do it somewhere safe and under control instead of in a superhuman cockfighting den? It makes no sense. Then, at the end of the season, Wong gets Abomination out of jail a second time. What are you doing, Wong? Man, there's a reason why that guy in jail. Unfortunately guys, that is all the time we had for today. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Comment which of the above is the most upsetting. Till next time, cheers!